Hi everyone, and today's the day we take the locomotive down to our local club. It's early in the morning and I'm standing here in the shed and realistically I should be in the car because that's where the train is. So let's get into it, but before we do, I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed and if you haven't, please do. And let's go down to the club and see what improvements we've made with this little Bangle steam locomotive. Okay, so when we look at the ports, we have right there, we've got a score or a groove. And um, when we look at our slide face or our D valve here, you can see that it's been wearing, it's all polished. But there are a couple of witness marks on that. And I suspect that what's happening is the steam pressure is coming in here and bypassing straight into the exhaust port, giving us some of our blow by. So I am going to remove the cylinder or the stop top cylinder chests of both sides and I am going to lap them in and try and get them nice and smooth or at least better than what they are. So everything that we do has a knock on effect. So I've um, reinstated the surface on the slide valve there by giving it a lap and I've done the same thing on our port face here on the cylinder. Now I needed to shift the valve further across which basically meant that when the valve was in the orientation of here like this it's covering the port. So what I've done is I've turned around and put the uh, chest housing into the mill and I've put a slot in on an angle so that basically uh, the steam has the opportunity to fill that chest without being blocked. So the only thing I've got to do now is reinstate all the studs, hook it all back up and run this side back on compressed air to make sure that everything's right and um, hopefully it will seat a lot better being able to have the full surface or the full area of here um, sealing against this whole port face here as opposed to last time I think it was probably around a sixteenth um, of an inch so it, was, it wasn't it was going to work properly so there, there is some error there I'm not sure what it is but I'm going to make up a new set of um, D valves for it and uh, 
put it back together and as I said run it on compressed air and see how it goes from there. So I noticed the loco had a little bit of blow by, well enough that it was showing a little bit of concern and as you guys saw I've just popped this piston out but it's actually a it's been created two-piece piston so these these screws here obviously come off and allow the piston ring to go on but uh, what I've noticed is these screws are loose this whole assembly is loose and these screws have backed out and by backing out they've been hitting it the end cap and I don't know if you remember my last video, the previous one. I said that the uh, after installing the assembly, I noticed there's a little bit of binding. And that's probably what the binding was, was these screws have backed out. And they're now hitting the, um, the end cap. The clearance on the rings look good. The wear pattern on the wing rings don't look ideal. Um, but definitely this being loose isn't going to help with it being steam tight. And it certainly won't help with the, the wear either because it just means that this piston ring is going to roll over in the gap. And so I think that's the first thing we do is try and fix this. And if you have a look in the uh, oh, bottom left hand corner, the orientation there, you'll see what looks like a screw. That's actually the imprint of one of those screws in the pistons. And that's been hitting the end cap there. And if you look slightly above it, you'll also see the... Um, slight imprint of the second one but certainly the first one's left its impression there which obviously in any uh in any situation isn't ideal so hopefully now this sort of rectifies a few of the issues that we've had with this so from the previous footage you could tell that i had to file these rings i wasn't going to do it in real time as this is a process that you need to take your time with because it's quite easy to turn around and break a ring um you can see that the fitment is a lot smoother in the ring groove and now all that's left since the gap has been set to around 3 thou for the rings in the bore after trial fitting it's time to fit them to the steam engine it's hard to see but basically right around there is our ring and the gap there's a massive improvement between what we had before to what we've got now um, the piston moves nice and freely in the bore and that's it so hopefully that makes a difference okay guys it's a fantastic day this is take two we now have the sweet pea we have 1.6 kilometers of rail network to run it on and we have new valves we have lapped valves we have seated valves we have new piston rings and hopefully we have a good day so let's get into it and see what happens
What a fantastic little traction engine that is. That is a three inch scale cliff and bunting traction engine. That's an Australian made iconic um, traction engine that worked many of the fields in the early, I don't know, 1900s. Anyway, back to my little sweet pea. It worked flawlessly through the whole day. It ran probably around 10 kilometers, I would say and I never had an issue with it. Its exhaust beat just got better and better as those piston rings wore in and the slide valves wore in to their faces and everything that was an issue previously in our other episodes was not an issue. I could confidently say that this locomotive is now reinstated back into service and it's been a fantastic journey and I thank every one of you for joining me. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. It helps me out, helps the channel out. We don't make any money, but it just shows your appreciation. And I've got plenty of other projects that are on the boil in the background too. Until right, next time, guys, take care. That's me. I'm out of here. Goodbye.